This video is brought to you by Thermaltec, Adata, and XPG. Yo, what is up everyone? This is Mike coming at you from Taipei Game Show 2019. And today we've got a very special guest interview introducing James Norris, senior game designer of The Division 2. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. Just uh, trying to uh, nourish my voice as best <laughs> as I can. Been doing a lot of, a lot of talking and a, a, lot of, a lot of yelling just because uh, the, the energy here is, is amazing. And it's my first time to Taipei, so been enjoying all of the local delicacies as well. Good stuff. Nice. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first question. Let's just get straight into the. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, uh, what can you tell us about any major differences or changes between the first and second game? Um, yeah. So, we've been working on the Division Two for about 27 months, um, and while while a small team started out at the beginning, we've also had a team working on the Division One still doing mm -hmm. updates to that. So, we've taken all the knowledge and uh, and learnings from creating the Division One. And applied that to the division too. So we're, you know, we, we had a very end game focused mentality. Yeah. We, um, there's a lot of stuff available for players right on day one to get to get stuck into. You won't get to end game in day one unless you're an absolute maniac. But um, when, once you do, you know, we've we've added eight player raids is one of the big ones yeah. that, that we've done. Okay. There's all sorts of organized PvP for you to do with the conflict. We've got team deathmatch, yeah. domination modes. Um, the dark zone is still alive and well, um, as well as brand new. New mods, skills, weapons, gear, all sorts of stuff. I know you haven't played the demo yet, mm. but when you do, you'll be able to take a, take a look at these uh, these new specializations, which players unlock at level 30 as well. They've got their own progression tree, new new skills, new mods as well for, for players to get stuck into. So I think in terms of overall build diversity, the yeah. Division 2 is going to offer a lot of player choice. Okay. I think you just gave me a lot to take in. <laughs> okay, so starting off with the game modes, yeah. I, I want to know about, uh, are there going to be any new game modes? And because you mentioned raids, and uh, that's something that is not very common when it comes to shooting games, right? You don't really see a lot of these raids. You see them a lot in like MMORPGs like WoW, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, sure, sure. but not so much in these shooting type games. So how, how is that going to work? And what else can you tell me about new game modes? Well, the the, I mean, the raid obviously is the new game mode. Yeah, yeah. I I can't go much more into detail okay. about it right now. <laughs> but you know, it's it's going to provide players with the biggest challenge they've ever faced in the division mm. two. You know, it's instead of grouping up with with three other people, yeah. it's going to be eight total people. It's going to take even more coordination. You're going to really have to work together. I would suggest using voice chat. Um, and for some players that maybe generally play solo or only have a couple friends in the division, um, we've got a clans feature as well, which is another new feature where we'll make it easy for, for new players or hardcore players that have been, been playing for a long time to group up and find like-minded individuals to go tackle all the new content that's available. Um, so another little twist, kind of a new, a new feature is we've got three dark zones now instead of one. Um, and it's kind of a, a two-part reason for that. So the dark zone is always the area that has been the most affected by by the situation of, of you know first degree poison and now seven months later in Washington D.C. So we wanted we want to have three sort of different feelings to these dark zones so that players can choose the one that makes the most sense for them. And there are a few more changes in the dark zone. So yeah, we you know it's. Um, we wanted to create more player density in these dark zones because before in the dark zone you could kind of walk around for a while without running into somebody so they're a little bit smaller um, there are three of them um, there's a 12 player max in them so the likelihood of you getting involved in some exciting pvp in these dark zones is, is even greater than it was in the division one um, but we don't want you to be too scared about that. If the dark zone isn't your thing, we've, we've, we've sort of normalized the gear now as well. So we're going to make it more of a skill-based skill -based battle. So, you know, it's not just, I've got the best assault rifle, so I have this innate advantage over you. If we have the same gun, both of the stats of that gun are going to be the same. Okay. So it's going to be more about who's a better player rather than who's got the better gear. But 
the occupied dark zone is going to rotate once a week. So that's going to be akin to the older dark zone, where your gear, the, the better the gear you have, it will still be the same stats in the occupied dark zone. Okay. So a bit more hardcore. All right. All right. Awesome. So speaking of weapons, uh, you mentioned weapons just now. Uh, before you mentioned weapon mods. So I, I want to know: uh, Are there going to be any new weapons? And for the weapon mod system, uh, I think there were going to be some changes, right? So what can you tell us about those changes? So yeah, when when you unlock weapon mods now, it has a, a fixed set of stats, and you can use that mod on any number of, of different weapons. Um, so it's not going to be about finding all sorts of mods and min-maxing the stats and everything like that. Once you have a specific mod, you've got that mod that you can try out on all the different weapons in Division 2. As far as new weapons go, we've got the specialization classes. So we've introduced a 50 caliber anti-material rifle. Um, we've got the grenade launcher, really good for clearing out trash mobs and, and just kind of disrupting the enemy strategy. And then my own personal favorite is the crossbow, the survivalist. So that's kind of a, that's a one and done. You know, you wait for the right moment. Take a take a look at like a like a boss enemy's weak point, and pop that puppy, and then the rest of your team can just start uh, burning them down. Awesome. <laughs> that sounds super exciting. Uh, so, out of everything that you've done so far uh, as a senior game designer, what would you say has been the most fun part of the development process for you personally? Yeah. So. Um, I really enjoy working with the community. Uh, we have a program uh, within the division called the Elite Task Force, which is we select um, you know big fans, big big uh, people in the community that play the division too, and we invite them in to talk about upcoming features and the current state of the division. And that's that's really important to me. And one of the things that I really love is getting to meet the players and. and they're, they're the reason that we make these games. And through their feedback and, and all of the content that they create, like you guys create, it, it helps us to make the division better. Um, and just getting to, to, you know, because I watch all those videos and I'm like a little bit starstruck of them being able to like make videos <laughs> of the games that they love. So anytime I get to meet someone who's a big fan um, and talk with them about the game, and um, that's that's the most important thing to me. That's that's my favorite part of the show. All right, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I know that you said you couldn't tell us much, but is there anything, just like a little tidbit of information that hasn't been released to the public yet that you can divulge to us today? Anything, just a little morsel. I mean, uh, <laughs> I will tell you this. No, I cannot. <laughs> I mean, what are these things? No, no, no. I, I, I think uh, I don't. I don't know of any specific things that the public doesn't know that I'd, I'd be able to talk about today. I think we've got the beta coming up. Yeah. Um, very, very soon. There's going to be a lot more revealed in that uh, that nobody has seen before. So I'd, I'd rather just wait until everybody can can get into the beta and discover it. On your own, it'll be much more exciting for you to see it unfold in in the game than for a guy like me to explain it to you. Okay. If you if you want to tell us anything more about the game that you'd like to talk about, floor is yours. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. What have we covered? So I mean, talk about gamers, talk about weapons, talk about story. Go to the story. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the story. Yeah. story. So yeah, the. The Division One, as you know, takes place seven months after the, the Green Poison was released in New York City, spread all over the United States and eventually the world. And you've been called in, um, you responding to like a distress a distress beacon in Washington D.C. Um, so you show up, you're a new agent, and you've got to fight your way into the White House to basically take it back from, the, 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 it's currently being attacked, like the White House is being attacked, you know what I mean? And together with other division agents and the local sort of surviving members of the, the population of DC, you need to rebuild society and prevent an all-out civil war. Uh, it's, it's summertime, it's hot, you can wear shorts, no one's mowed the lawn in like a really, really long time, so it's, it's a new, environment for us to kind of to, yeah. to tell a different story yeah. and um, we 
we took some trips. I didn't personally get to go, but uh, a, a bunch of people from Massive and Reflections and Red Storm went out to uh, Washington, D.C., took a lot of reference images, and we used um, satellite imagery and geo geolocational data to make the map. So it's as close to a one-to-one -one ratio mm. um, as, as, as we could get for Washington, D.C. Yeah. So it's it's got... All of the monu it's got a lot of the monuments, it's got residential areas, it's got commercial areas, lots of different type of, of play spaces for different types of combat than we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. That also helped it to create the, the, the world that we're trying to bring to you in Division 2. So awesome. I'm really excited for people to play the beta. Um, and yeah, just I'll, I'll be listening. If you, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're talking about it online, I'll be listening. <laughs> uh, I'll be in there playing with you. So uh, yeah, I'm just... Just to, I'm just hyped for people to finally start playing this this game. We've been putting a lot of work into it. So once it comes out, we're getting there. We're gonna stream this shit out. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, hey, hit me up. Maybe I can hop in and play with you guys. Yeah, for first sure. times. That'd be fun. All right, guys. So that's all for this very special guest interview with James Norris, senior game designer of Tom Clancy's The Division Two. Thanks again for your time. Anytime, man. All right, and we will be getting the Phoenix Edition of the game or we're going to be pre-ordering that shit as soon as possible and then streaming the hell out of it for you guys so stay tuned yeah. thank you so much for your time anytime yeah and uh <laughs> 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 I'm supposed to do this. I should have hit this.